Hey all, Blake here with another video and recently I shared with you a short video of a new egg harvesting contraption. A fair bit of interest in that and a few people were wondering how to make one. So I'm going to show you how to uh, create this DIY egg harvesting contraption to make harvesting eggs a whole lot easier. So let's jump straight into the video. Right off the top, I do have to credit a lot of this to Michael Kaur. Kind of, he has two main ideas for harvesting eggs and after discussing it with him, I hybridized the two versions and created the version that I am using here. So definitely a lot of credit does have to go out to him. He is a fantastic uh, father-son duo doing a bunch of really cool stuff and he's starting to make videos as well. So we'll drop his link down below, but a huge thank you to him. So I've got some tools here that we will need. You should be able to work around some of these if you don't have the exact bits and pieces. But generally the principle is we want a container or area that the fish are going to spawn within. We're going to use an air lift just like in a sponge filter whereby air goes up a tube and water is drawn through with it. That is also going to draw through the eggs and deposit them in a container that is going to float above the contraption. Don't be too bogged down in it just for the moment, but the main thing you need to realize is that there's going to be eggs down the bottom, water goes up and then deposits them at the top. And that's where we're going to harvest your eggs from. To achieve this, I'm going to use this multi-tool here to cut some plastics and easy materials. We've also got a drill with a spade bit to make some holes so that we can insert our pieces into it. We've got some hot glue and, some, and a hot glue gun here to stick everything together. You can also use aquarium safe silicon, but I've just got heaps of this available and I find it easier to use. We've got some PVC cutters because we do have some of this irrigation black PVC that we're going to use here. So as that, you need two 90 degree elbows that are going to fit the size of PVC that you're going to use. Also, I've got a little four millimeter tap, um, self tapping screw here to uh, put our airline tubing onto. We also need something that will help the container at the top float. I'm using this EVA foam tile cutoff here. You can use styrofoam or anything that is gonna float. I've got two sections here of coarse uh, foam or sponge that is gonna basically mean that the water can flow out, but our eggs will stay in. Now to weigh this whole thing down, you need to have, just have four weights. I'm using rocks here that, you know, I'm, I'm not too fussed that they're gonna be sort of used and, and never seen again. As well as that, uh, I've got a container here. Don't choose your spouse's favorite container because we are gonna cut it up. And then the most tricky thing to source is probably gonna be this contraption here. It is a box with a grate on top. And then inside the box, it's sloped in all directions down to the hole at the bottom where our airlift is gonna be connected into. Uh, this should, you shouldn't necessarily need a 3D printer to achieve this. I'm sure that if you get creative, you can probably use a container, you know, maybe you have a sheet of acrylic that you cut all these slots into, and that can be your grate. And then with the leftover acrylic, you could maybe silicon it together to create this sloping effect. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of you out there that are super creative. But if you really want to 3D print it, just like me, I am also happy to share the files. And uh, there's a lot of 3D printing services in a lot of area these days. So you might be able to even commission it out for somebody to print it up for you. Now that we have gone through and discussed everything, let's just go ahead and put it together. So to get started, I am just going to flip my box here uh, straight and uh, upside down and I'm gonna hot glue in our four stones so that we can weigh this contraption down. Be liberal with the hot glue. You don't want these coming off over time and finding it floating in your aquarium one day. If you are wondering, uh, I have printed this box in just standard uh, PLA plus. So just be careful. Some of the organic PLAs do degrade and break down over time. So make sure you use a strong PLA or even a stronger material like PETG or ABS, but just make sure whatever you use is gonna be aquarium safe and not degrade over time. So I've got those four stones just hot glued in at the base there, just like so. It can be as neat or messy as you like because we are inevitably flipping this upside down. But while we wait for that glue to cool down, we can stick our 90 degree elbow on this. So 
just be mindful that it's going to face the bottom of the table and I'm just going to once again hot glue it in place. So another thing to keep in mind is I didn't want to create any areas where eggs would get trapped. So I have just cut the end of this elbow because I want it to be sort of flush with the uh, entrance to the uplift just so that we don't create any snags or um, anything that's going to accidentally trap an egg. So I'm just going to run the hot glue around the edge. Because this is an airlift, you want to make sure that all of the uh, outside of this penetration is airtight because we don't want any air leaking out that's going to affect the airlift's ability to um, lift these eggs. We'll just sit that off to the side now while our glue dries up and we can start to assemble the other components of our uplift. So we'll have this black irrigation tubing and we'll connect another 90 degree elbow to the top of that. I've just got a barbed fitting here, so it's just a matter of pushing it into the other. Just sort of working it down. If you're really struggling, you can apply some heat and it will help to um, nest the two pieces together. After that, we just want to drill a small hole at the base of the uplift where we can put our, our little connection for our airline tubing into there. Now, just because I might end up taking it off um, airline and putting on new airline for this contraption quite a bit. I do also just put a bit of hot glue around the base of this connection as well. So we're really moving along now and it's time that we can start to build our collection area where the eggs are going to be lifted up to. That's where this container comes in. Now I've got quite a tall one here so I'm going to use my multi-tool to just cut it down in size. Firstly I'm going to cut the container down and then I'm going to cut a hole at the top of it where we're going to penetrate this elbow into it. Now just be gentle when making these cuts because, you know, especially if you use a plastic container, they can be brittle and actually crack quite often. Okay, so we've got the little box cut here with our penetration in the side and it's cut down in size. So what we need to do is, obviously water will come in here, but at the moment it will just flow over the top as it flows out. So I'm just going to cut some little grooves and we're going to insert this sponge sort of either side of that uh, groove so that we can make sure that water going out is filtered so that we don't have our eggs, you know, basically escaping on us. Okay, so with our first groove cut, if your sponge is a little bit oversized, it's just a matter of sort of squeezing it in and making sure there's no real gaps around the edges. You can just seat it in place like so. But if you don't have the same sort of excess sponge, you can actually hot glue this in place as well, but it will make it a little bit harder to clean Whereas this version, we can just simply pull it out, squeeze it out and clean it that way. Okay, so now we have our collection box all done. I just did basically two corners of sponge so that there's plenty of room for water to escape. Now, we do also need to help this to be able to float. Otherwise, it will just tip over, go on weird angles when we want it fairly level so that our eggs don't go everywhere. That's where this EVA foam comes in handy. So I'm just going to cut it into sections and hot glue it once again all the way around the top of this box. Okay, so there we go. I've just got this foam hot glued around the top so it should give plenty of buoyancy. Next up, it's just a matter of putting our 90 degree elbow inside the 20 millimeter hole that we drilled with our spade bit. But drill whatever size hole to whatever size elbow you have. Then I'm just going to attach the irrigation tubing to the uplift on the uh, box. So that's what we end up with. That's going to be our contraption complete with grate. So the fish are going to swim in here, lay their eggs. We're going to place some Subwasatang and some Java moss in there so that they can go and lay their eggs in there. We'll have an airline attached to this uplift tube here, which is going to put oxygen and draw water up through, suck in the eggs, and then they're going to go be deposited up in this box. And then every single day, we can take a turkey baster and harvest those eggs. The fish won't even know, and everyone will be happy. So let's get this in an aquarium now and show you how it works in action. So I've just placed some Christmas moss and some uh, at the entrance here. And in here we have some of these beautiful emerald rasboros. So the hope is, is that maybe tomorrow morning they'll do their dance in amongst this moss here, scattering all their eggs around. Then there's a constant, it's nothing too crazy. There's a constant um, 
pressure sort of sucking uh, water through which should help to bring those eggs through up our uplift tube and then deposit them out into our little box in here. So you can sort of just see there just like a sponge filter there's a few bubbles and it's sucking water through with it and uh, there was quite a bit of movement in, in and around the box um, when I first got it started just blowing the dust out really from from this container being in storage so okay so here's the previous version that you saw in that short video and I haven't harvested yet today so I thought maybe we'll do a live harvest and see what we come up with okay so I've gone ahead and using my little turkey baster here I have sucked everything out of that box well for the most part anyway and put it into this little specimen container here and there is an absolute ton of eggs Yes, there is some detritus and whatnot as well, and we'll have to be conscious not to let a lot of the eggs fung us up. But I was very, very interested not only to see eggs, but actually quite a few little fry. So I think there's about maybe five or six little fry in here. It's going to be next to impossible to pick up on the camera. And even you might be thinking, well, those aren't eggs. That's just, you know, snail droppings and all that. Well, I'll just get my little, we'll just give it a little... A little burst like that and you can see look at all those eggs there are so I'm not lying to you this is definitely my favorite new method to uh, collect eggs from egg scattering fish I think the principle is pretty ap applicable to a lot of different situations it's not too hard to put together and I think most people should be able to achieve it and I think that more importantly this method here is the least stressful for the actual fish themselves so so there you go guys, that's my new and improved method for collecting eggs from egg scattering fish. Hopefully you like this. If you've got any questions, be sure to drop them down below. I uh, definitely recommend checking it out for yourself, giving it a go and seeing what happens. Other than that, if you like the video, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.